I'm so bored. I wish I knew what to do. What the hell is that? Is that sounds like Irish folk music? Oh God, I hate Irish folk music. What the hell? A rainbow! Oh my God! Oh, there's never any rainbows in these parts of the world. Oh my God! A pot of gold. That must mean there's leprechauns around here. Oh. Oh my god, Mr. Leprechaun, now that I found your gold, do I get to keep the pot of gold? No. Just to keep this pot of gold, you have to review all of the Leprechaun films. The horror films from the, like what, the 90s and early 2000s? Yes, the ones with Warwick Davis. Warwick, 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 Warwick Davis. Davis. But it must be an honest review. No tricks. I don't know how I would trick you with it. I mean, yeah, I'll give you an honest review of the Leprechaun movies, but just to be sure, I'm gonna watch these movies, I'm gonna get this gold, right? Well. <sighs> All right, yeah, I'll do it. I had nothing else better to do today, so fine. Yeah, I mean, I'll do it, whatever. Okay, once again, here we are reviewing another horror franchise. This time, it's Warwick Davis's Leprechaun. I think there's different directors each time, so whatever. All we know is that Warwick Davis is the most important one of them all. There's six Leprechaun films. Leprechaun 1, Leprechaun 2, Leprechaun 3, Leprechaun 4, In Space, Leprechaun 5, In the Hood. Leprechaun 6, Back to the, back to the Hood. <laughs> I did name him, okay? That's just, that's that's what happened. Wait, before we go any further, I just want to thank today's beautiful partners at Gamersubs. Now, Gamersubs has been a long-standing partner with this channel, and for good reason. Tasty beverages, it gets you hyped up. Zero sugar, keto-friendly, what else do you need? Big, beautiful anime girls <laughs> on shakers, oh my god. And the delicious flavors that go inside make Gamersubs a goddamn must. Right now, February 7th through February 9th, you get 22% off when you use promo code PAPAMEAD at checkout. You get the deals, you get the discounts, and also if you want to sign up and get some free flavors, you get to do a little trial period, and if you don't like it, then you say no. But here's the thing, as soon as you try it, you're going to be hooked and so in love with Gamer Subs, I swear you're going to be coming crawling back. And the best thing about it too is they have many non-caffeinated options, so in case you don't want to go too hard, drink too much caffeine, have your heart go boom, you can just have nice, tasty, non-caffeinated beverage. It's nice. You know what? It's good and good for you. So I just wanted to say thank you, Gamersubs, for being an amazing partner. And like I said, February 7th to February 9th, use promo code PAPAMEAT to get 22% off your order. Thank you so much, Gamersubs, for partnering with us. And back to the video. We're just going to go in numerical order, as we always do. Watch it from beginning to end. So let's start off with Leprechaun 1. Leprechaun 1, ah, the beginning of a franchise. It's always so exciting. This one, beginning in 1993, was made with a budget of $1 million, and it made around $8.6 million. This is why hell starts. These are why mediocre things rise to the top. But I will be honest, out of all the horror franchises we've seen, this is the first one, well, I guess you could say Final Destination kind of is a bit campy and a bit humorous. I feel like from the beginning, Leprechaun was trying to be more horror and comedy, but it was definitely a mixture. Like, they wanted to do horror comedy and then obviously they turn up the schlock way way more so these do in a way they are fun to watch but they're still like bad horror films it's a good and bad it's sweet and sour is how i describe these which the first movie it falls perfectly into this category because one you have warwick davis i mean god forbid the guy was in star wars willow hello he's willow right also in this movie, it's Jennifer Aniston's first movie ever. So that's why usually whenever you look this up, Jennifer Aniston is the biggest person on the poster and usually there is no Warwick Davis to be seen. That's unfortunate because in all of these movies, you're gonna find is Warwick Davis, the majority of the time, is the absolute highlight of all of these movies. His performance always sings through. Which, without further ado, let's talk about Leprechaun 1. Which Leprechaun 1 starts off pretty funny with an older Irish man who kind of comes home shit-faced drunk. It feels very stereotypical. It almost feels borderline racist towards Irish people, if I'm being completely honest. And it's two extremely thick accented Irish people. A wee person, a leprechaun. I caught him and made him show me where his gold is. Living in North Dakota? I just don't know why they're there. I mean, like, obviously people can move there, but to me, I was just like, what? Why are you there? Why the hell are they there? But this man named O'Grady <laughs> stole leprechaun gold. He's rich as shit. And uh-oh, the leprechaun comes back and he's pissed. Pushes his wife. Actually, you know what? He doesn't even push his wife downstairs. That's one thing that we're going to find with all these leprechaun films. The leprechaun really doesn't, like, kill people. People kind of just die of different ways. Isn't that the weirdest thing? He's supposed to be, like, a Michael Myers or a Jason Voorhees or something like that, but he just is kind of there and he just rhymes. 
and people like in the in this case O'Grady's wife she just she ooh, and trips and falls down some steps and dies and then even O'Grady he doesn't even kill O'Grady O'Grady traps the leprechaun in his basement by putting a four-leaf clover on a box which I thought four-leaf clover I didn't I didn't know is that a part of leprechaun tradition or four-leaf clover is like bad for them I thought that they liked four-leaf clovers this is bringing you good luck yeah so I, I, in, the, in this movie though the leprechauns they don't like four-leaf clovers Warwick Davis does not like four-leaf clovers that's actually in his contract why he's like I don't want it is that what Warwick Davis sounds like? Much like a crucifix to a vampire, this is how this exact same effect a four-leaf clover has on a leprechaun. He traps a leprechaun in the basement in a wooden box, and he's gonna burn down the house. He takes his wife out of there, because, you know, like I said, she tumbled down the steps, but he drags her back out. And before he can light the match, he has a stroke and is presumably dead. So once again, the leprechaun doesn't even kill him. And then the leprechaun is just like, I'll get out of here one day. And then we do a 10-year jump. And then we see Jennifer Aniston and her dad driving in. I guess they're moving to this farmhouse. Oh, it's, it's, it's our farmhouse for the summer. Move over to the farmhouse for the summer and Jennifer Aniston's role in this is pretty unsufferable. She's definitely like a better actor than almost everybody in the film, probably besides Warwick Davis, but her actual character is just insufferable. She's like a city kid and she just keeps talking about how boring and bad everything is until she sees like a very apparent 35 year old man helping paint the house and then her pussy gets all wet and she's just like, oh, actually I like it out here. But it's, I, I think the guy is supposed to be in his early twenties. He looks so old. And then our other cast of characters is a large Down syndrome ridden man, or they say dim-witted, named Ozzy and his like Macaulay Culkin wannabe brother Alex. They're all siblings, which the 35-year-old Giga Chad guy is apparently brothers with the dim-witted man Ozzy and the Macaulay Culkin wannabe Alex. Alex is his brother and then Ozzy's a friend. Whatever. Who gives a shit? Doesn't matter. One of them is wearing like a fucking Dr. Seuss shirt and he's walking around and he's like, oh, I don't know. What are we doing? Paint falls on his fucking head. All of a sudden, Ozzy walks in the house and he hears a little girl because Warwick Davis got woken up from Jennifer Aniston trying to suck this guy's cock in the basement. She gets spooked, runs out of there. Ozzy comes down because he thinks he hears a little girl. Wipes off the four-leaf clover that's been sitting there for 10 years in this cobweb-ridden basement. And here we go. Warwick Davis comes out and uh, starts rhyming. And that was kind of a precursor that we should have known that there's gonna be a lot of rhyming in these movies. I didn't I, I didn't really understand that either. Do leprechauns rhyme a lot? Does that show that something's more whimsical or fantastical if they rhyme? Yeah. I guess that's true. Like a Dr. Seuss book is supposed to be kind of whimsical, right? But needless to say, Ozzy freaks out, but because he's like borderline fucking you know, ooh, no one believes them until, uh-oh, there they go, we see them. Now, this whole rest of this movie, I really cannot paraphrase this enough, is minor inconveniences happening until we crescendo to the end, which this is supposed to be like a slasher movie. It's kind of the pacing of it. Usually in a Friday the 13th, you have all the annoying characters building up and they're all sucking and fucking and they're all joking around and then Jason kind of picks them off one by one. That's kind of what happens here, except once again, Warwick Davis doesn't ever really kill anybody. The Leprechaun never really does anything. He scratches Jennifer Aniston's leg he bites the dad's hand. I think he tries biting Ozzy's ear. He kills the pawn shop guy. Or he kills a pawn shop guy. Or no, it's not even a pawn shop guy. It's an antique coin guy. They find some gold there, which Ozzy eats one of the gold coins. And then the rest of them are like, oh, here's this coin. I bet it's worth a lot because it's old because they find a sack of gold coins in an abandoned truck, which I'm guessing is supposed to be O'Grady's because there's a rainbow. And he's like, we gotta go stick it to the rainbow. So then they bring the coins into the town. And then for some reason, there's just an antique coin dealer conveniently in this town. And he dies. He's the only one who dies in the film, I'm pretty sure. Moral of the story is though, the rest of it is like they give Warwick Davis a tiny little cart, like a little crazy he cart in a barn. He rides into town on a tricycle. They definitely fast forward the footage and it's really embarrassing. He gets pulled over by the police for speeding. The officer gets chased by the leprechaun into the woods, eventually getting killed. Okay, so the, the cop does die. But none of the main cast dies. And then moral of the story is they keep going like back and forth at the house. They keep having these like weird back and forths. And the movie kind of just ends with Ozzy going to be like, that's it. I'm going to kill myself. He wants me because he ate the gold coin, but that doesn't really happen. And then the Macaulay Kul Culkin kid takes a four leaf clover and slingshot it into the leprechaun's mouth and he explodes or he melts into a skeleton and you're like oh thank god and then they have to do the trope where the guy comes back so the leprechaun comes back except now he's just a gooey skeleton and then they just like push him down the well and blow it up with gasoline and you're like we did it we beat the leprechaun and then once again of course they have to do the cliche of oh but wait curse this well that we soul shall dwell till i find the magic that breaks me spell no he's gonna get his gold leprechaun won which, you know, okay, look at this. What did you think of my movie, Leprechaun 1? I, I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. It was like extremely mediocre. 
I, I feel I actually feel bad saying that too. Cause all in all, it was it was fine. It's like a fun schlocky kind of movie. Oh, you hurt me feelings. Okay, I don't even know what the fuck I'm looking at right here. Okay, is that? Oh, there he goes. He's just crawling down. He is very short. It's taking a while. I'm sorry, but I have to say, I have to get this pot of gold. I have to get the gold. So I'm gonna have to. I'm reviewing these honestly. So you know, I mean, all in all, though, for a first movie, I just it, it kind of wish there was just more deaths. They had the funny scene where he polishes the shoes. Oh yeah, he, th he th there's a part. Yeah, he, he throws all the shoes out and he polishes them because apparently that's like I don't. I think I should have done more research on what like standard leprechaun what superstitions or like tropes. I didn't know leprechauns shine shoes. You know what I mean? Okay, get away from my shoes. These are fucking air monarchs, dude. They don't need to be polished. He's like trying to polish my shoes. Get out of here. God, this fucking guy. This is terrible. This is horrible so far. We have we have five more of these, by the way, which I will say for a slasher film, they did something that I was very stoked on and they didn't show any boobies. Usually in these films, there's just, you gotta sell tickets, you know, to kids, 13 year old boys, 14 year old boys who love seeing tits, all that kind of stuff. And there wasn't one, kind of strange. For a slasher, pretty strange. Leprechaun one, there you go. Okay, Leprechaun 2. Still before any of the gimmicky names, which is nice. So that's pretty good. Okay, and we're already another Leprechaun crawling up. Don't they have powers? Can't they just like not crawl like this? I, I feel bad. You're gonna watch Leprechaun 2. Yeah, that's why I just, I said that already. What the fuck? I hope you enjoy it. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Le Leprechaun 2, 1994, which is just a year after. Same kind of budget, they got 1.5 million, so they got a little raise because, you know, the first movie did make a profit, but this time the profit, 2.3. Not even a million in profit. Usually that takes a while. By the fourth movie, we see these kind of, kind of profits, but already it just doesn't, whatever. Which I think this one was still in theaters too, which is the last one to get a theatrical release, which, you know, what do you do? This one starts off and it's like a thousand years ago. It's like medieval times, so the Leprechaun has a slave, and basically him and the slave are homies and he goes over and they start peeping this chick and we find out very quickly that this movie is going to be sent around leprechaun trying to get some pussy in all honesty i hate to say it right but that's just what it is that dims is the facts we know what that dirty dog wants i know what he wants okay i don't that's it feels just gross i don't i'm not even gonna look back over here because that just feels gross i hate that he's just looking at me look just somewhere else anywhere else please it's just so distracting i'm sorry basically he sits there he sees this girl and it turns out to be his slave's daughter and he's like no and if she sneezes three times that means that they're wed but then his like servant or slave or whatever says god bless you on the last time and it like breaks the curse it's not the flow of that feels very odd and essentially he's like oh well in another thousand years i'll get like another descendant of your daughters or whatever right which is why upon rewatching this in the second one we get like a little book montage and it's all the women throughout the thousand years until the one we land on now. Our main character in this one are Cody, his creepy weird boss, Morty, who is the guy from Seinfeld where he offers him the pen in the retirement home, if you remember him. Do me a personal favor. No, friend. I'm not take the pen. I cannot take it. Take the pen. Are you sure? <laughs> Love that guy. And Bridget, which Bridget's performance in this, I'm not gonna lie, she's not a very good actor. All right, just gonna put that out there now. Cody works for like a haunted tours thing in LA and he kind of like scams people. His boss, Morty, is kind of a scumbag gambler, drunk, degenerate as well. And it's just about them like hustling people. But then Bridget gets mad because Cody won't take off work even though he's like stressed about money or something. And then she goes off with a guy named Ian who works at a go-kart track, which as soon as I saw the go-kart track, I'm like, God damn it, they're gonna put Warwick Davis back in a tiny go-kart because apparently I'm getting, maybe that was popular enough in the first movie, I don't know. So now Cody's all bummed. I mean, he's like watching TV, he's all sad. And he sees Bridget with Ian making out on the TV and he's like, no, let me paraphrase this first. The introduction to the leprechaun this time is this door opens on a tree and the leprechaun steps out and he's like barraging a drunk homeless man for drinking Canadian whiskey. But it, I, I will say, I like the door opening. I thought that was kind of cool. A lot of fog, big fun light. And he does rip out the homeless man's golden tooth. So, you know, a little more violent right away than the first movie, which is why I like to. I will say though, that when they rip out his tooth, like I don't think they put all the makeup on the tooth properly. So it's like it ripped out his tooth to reveal his actual tooth underneath. And it just kind of looks shitty and funny, but you know, what do you do? But now the leprechaun is out to hunt for Bridget because Bridget is the descendant of his servants or slaves daughter. So as he's going around, Ian drops Bridget off, but he's mad because he's like, what are you a fucking tease? I took off work for you. And she's like, dude, you work at a go-kart track. I mean, you're not the fucking CEO of some business or something, calm down. He so, bought her two chili dogs. He did buy, he did say that. And he put, he put in there, he's like, I bought you a fucking chili dog. And what about those chili? 
chili dogs. Like she's Sonic the Hedgehog. Like that's supposed to be some big fucking perk for her. And she's like, cool, well, see ya. And he's like, oh, fucking bitch. And this is where we get to also see that the leprechaun, he mimics Bridget's voice and you see her in the garage. Ian. Bridget? And I think that the actor didn't want to show her actual tits, so she takes off her shirt, but it cuts, and it's just like someone else's neck and chest. But they did immediately, they're like, we gotta, we gotta have some boobs in this one. I bet you anything, people, whoever made these films were like, you gotta throw some tits in there, for real. We're losing people. Way more profit if we just had some tits. But, needless to say, it is kind of cool because the guy's like, oh, boobies, and his face is getting close to the boobs, and then it cuts to reality where actually it's like a giant lawnmower with two blades that cuts up his face, so that's fun. But the problem with this, though, too, is that you don't get to see any of the brutal kills, which is like kind of some of the fun parts, right? You know, it's like what makes it fun with like Michael Myers or like Jason Voorhees, like Jason, like smashing those girls in the sleeping bag, whatever. It's like obviously, I, mean, I don't know. It's just, you kind of want to see some of that shit because it makes it brutal, right? Kevin Bacon getting stabbed in the neck. Looks cool. Kristen Glover getting the ax in his head. I'm not going to keep talking about Friday the 13th. It's a good, <laughs> good film series or it's, you know, it's all right, but everything's always off screen. And then Warwick Davis has to rhyme a little bit. And he's like, Ugh. she sneezes once. She sneezes twice. <laughs> Which, thank God, Cody shows up and he has some flowers for Bridget. And he's like, listen, baby, I'm sorry I have to work that nine to five. We forgive this little hound dog. And she's like, all right, fine. Leprechaun shows up, starts making her sneeze, sneezes once. He's like, what the heck? Are you allergic to these? She's like, no, come on. They go in the kitchen. Uh-oh, sneezes again. And then the third time she sneezes, Cody's like, God bless you. And then he, fucking the leprechaun like wraps a telephone cord around his throat. He starts strangling. <laughs> God bless you. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> so I was like, what the fuck? I thought that was pretty cool to stop her from saying it. So now they're married. Cody throws like a cast iron fire poker at him and the leprechaun catches it and it burns his hand. So now we're being introduced to more lore that I guess leprechauns, they can't be touched by cast iron or it makes them weak. But needless to say, they teleport away like fucking Goku, instant transmissions away. We show up to the leprechaun's hut in like a cave where like it gets kind of like, like a bit graphic for a second. I mean, like he like straps the girl down and he like starts cutting off her clothes and rubbing her belly. And then you're like, oh God, where, where is this going? This feels so like smutty, but thankfully it stops. But he does say some shit like, I'm going to put a leprechaun baby in ya. Didn't I mention no. you'll be bearing the wee one soon. <laughs> Get me out of this! And I'm going to cut up your face <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> I'm gonna cut up your face and put leprechaun goo inside you. And have you grow a nice leprechaun baby. And she starts screaming. We cut back to Cody. He's talking to his fucking drunk ass boss about how leprechauns are real. And he's like, yeah, on my dead body. Until like immediately the leprechaun comes back and introduces himself. Warwick Davis just jumps into scene. They have no real way of like adding special effects. So he kind of just always hops from off screen into screen. And he's like, but leprechauns are real. And they get attacked. And now Morty and Cody are... Having to be Morty with Rick and Morty out. It's just like, it's so hard to not just be like, Morty, all that kind of stuff. It doesn't matter. They start going around, you know, they're freaking out and then they decide to hide in a bar. Cody goes into a bathroom and they do like a weird gag where he thinks the leprechaun's coming in, but it's just a little person, but it's the actor who's in Bad Santa and also Me, Myself and Irene, which let me divert for a second and Me, Myself and Irene. At the beginning of the movie, Jim Carrey's character is like, would you be with me if I was broke? She's like, of course I will, of course. And he's like, even if we lived in Antarctica and we all we could do is eat whale blubber and she's like of course and then later on the movie she leaves him for this like black little person this character who's like this marine biologist like the super smart guy and uh as he's getting i know i know this is just stay with me for a second as he's uh driving away or like she's leaving him and he's like but you said that you'd eat whale blubber for me and then <laughs> and then the, the actor does oh she'll be eating whale blubber all right right after i free willy <laughs> And they do like one of the grossest kisses on camera. I remember me and my family used to fuck it. I used to cry laughing at that when I was younger. Holy shit. Anyways, he's in it and he has a creepy ass smile. Good stuff. He leaves the bathroom and Morty's not even looking at Cody. And we get like the, it's way too long of a take. Way too long. He's like, what the hell, do, what the hell's your problem, Morty? What the hell's going on? And he takes forever and he's like looking over and he just isn't telling Cody what's up. And he's just as, he's here.
which I get it. It's St. Patrick's Day. There's other little people in the bar, so you would assume, oh, who knows? But it, it, he looks like a demon. He looks like a demon. He has like long ass sharp fingernails. And then they get over on him because earlier on in the film in the bar, this bartender had a non-alcoholic version of something for him. So Morty knows that he could beat him in a drinking competition. And Warwick Davis does get fucking smashed and like all of his little friends leave as well, even though they're chanting with him. I don't know if that's supposed to be offensive or not. I can't tell. It's a freak's reference. It's a freak's reference? What's Freaks? Freaks is a movie about little people and a like, sideshow thing. They say, One of us. One of us. One of us. Google gobble. Google gobble. They say Google gobble? Yeah. Are you making that up, Nick? Yeah. That feels horrible. Yeah. That reference did not, I didn't register that reference at all, so I apologize. But he out drinks him, and then Morty is like basically just bullying the shit out of this leprechaun. The leprechaun escapes after this, and then he ends up in an espresso bar, and then here's another reference. We have the guy from Mad TV who played. Stuart. Remember that? Oh, Stuart. He's like, I don't want you. Remember that? No, oh, well, that happened. It's the same guy. Harry remembers that. I see him in there. It was the same guy from the first Awesome Power Ups movie who gets smashed by the thing. They're like, move. And he does. No! Whatever. He's in it. I, forgot. I think his name was something McDonald. Tom McDonald, I think is his name. Michael McDonald? Who's a popular artist that has something McDonald as well? It's like an artist. It's like a musician. I thought it was Michael McDonald. It, it doesn't fucking matter. But he does take this scene and uh, he has the guy's skin bubble. It's supposed to be gruesome, but it just looks kind of cheap and stupid. And there's so much like intentional comedy and then unintentional comedy from cringe and then horror. You never really know what the fuck you're supposed to feel at any given time. So you kind of just it, it revert to everything is schlocky and funny. So it makes a lot of the moments where you're like supposed to be like, oh, this is creepy. Kind of makes it fall flat a bit. They go to the go-kart track because Cody knows that there's like a cast iron safe. They're like, we're going to trap the leprechaun in the safe. And they do so. They open the door and the leprechaun runs in. He's like, oh, let me out. It's painful in here. It's cast iron. Right? But then Morty locks Cody in a room because he wants to get the three. Because whenever you catch a leprechaun, which I've heard this before, when you catch a leprechaun, you get three wishes. And the first thing Morty wishes for is his gold. But then the gold grows inside of him. It looks really fucking weird, but it's because it's supposed to be his actual pot of gold, but it just looks really weird. I mean, for, you know, a practical effect, whatever, it's kind of funny, but it just looks so stupid. Morty's like, you gotta get this shit out of me. I wish for you to get it out. And he's like, oh, here, you have to let me go. And then he basically says, I wish for you to be free of the cast iron safe. And then he cuts it out of him by, of course, the gold just like burst out of his stomach. So Morty dies. Cody gets out of the closet from the go-kart track, but then he gets arrested by a security guard walking the grounds. Who's just like, how many people have you killed today? you fucking freak because the people think that he's the person who's been killing people. Wouldn't you know, because they're at the go-kart track, here comes Warwick Davis and a fucking obnoxious ass Mario Kart looking fucking thing. He like hits and kills the security officer. But then you find out that the leprechaun can't kill Cody because he has one of his coins and that makes him invincible to the leprechaun's attacks. So that's when he goes to his lair. And from there he finds out, you know, the, the, the leprechaun's lairs at Houdini's old house. Apparently that's, you know, whatever. Doesn't fucking matter. Walks to the deal. If you try to find Bridget, he finds it's a skeleton that used to be the servant. They keep trying to escape this cave, but they keep just going down the same tunnel and coming out and they're like, we're stuck. And it's like, yeah, dude, it's one tunnel. Where the fuck do you think this thing is gonna go? Bridget tries to act like she wants to suck and fuck the leprechaun. He gets all horned up and she tries stabbing him, but it doesn't work. There's a rock that looks like a mushroom. Like it looks so fake and we've been seeing it in the movie the whole time. And finally it's revealed that that's where he's gonna blow up out of. I'm pretty sure you see wires in all these movies where he's flying around. You just see the wires because I don't think these movies were ever meant to be viewed outside of a 720p format, which once again, the leprechaun who pretends to be Bridget is able to get the coin, but it ends up being a fake coin. It's like a chocolate coin, I'm pretty sure. So it's a ruse and then Cody stabs him with a uh, cast iron steak. And then the leprechaun once again explodes. We're, I'm finding it, this is this is gonna be an ongoing theme, which the ending of this movie is makes me so frustrated is whenever they leave, Cody just flicks the gold coin that like the leprechaun had just right outside the door. And it's like, it's supposed to be something where he's not focused on money anymore but at the same time, it's like, you just got them killing a fucking demon that we, I'm pretty sure is definitely gonna come back. Hey, let's just leave the gold coin that gave you any kind of defense right outside of his lair, whatever. But this time we don't see if there's gonna, you know, he doesn't say like, ooh, there's no last little leprechaun thing. So is he officially dead in this movie? I doubt it because there's four more. There's definitely more. It's gonna take a lot more to kill me. Okay, well his voice changed a little bit. <laughs> And there he goes, slowly crawling down. Uh, you know, your movie wasn't too bad, buddy. Thanks. I don't know if I liked two more than I liked one, if I'm being honest. I can't tell. So far, that, that was that was terrible. 
That was Morty. As much as I like that actor as the guy from Seinfeld, that he was the terrible character. Warwick Davis really did not do anything. We saw some wires and he exploded again. I, I this is I don't think Leprechaun 2 is overshadowing Leprechaun 1 at this point. So it does end quickly. The second they're out, they're just Well, that's with, that's with all of them. These movies are just like, and we're done. As soon as Warwick Davis explodes, they're just like, and we're done. No more resolution. Yep, we're done. Bye bye. Done. See you later. <laughs> that's what it feels like every time. All right, thanks. Bye. <laughs> you know, when they're done, they're done. Anyways, moving on to Leprechaun 3. Ah, Leprechaun 3. The budget's 1.2 million. We don't know the box office or anything because this was the first one where they're like, these are no longer, we're not gonna put these in theaters anymore. Straight to TV, direct to video with these, all right? I think Leprechaun 3, when I was a kid, this was the first cover I saw on a VHS when I was a kid, I'm pretty sure. There's a little soft spot in my heart for this. And I will say this one is definite improvement. This is when it starts finding its groove. It's like, they're funny in an intentional way. And like, it gets kind of cartoony. And I think the cartoony elements actually help a horror movie about a Leprechaun. Who would have thought? So this movie is all about the leprechaun is now in a pawn shop. He's, he's like a statue in a pawn shop in Las Vegas. And there's an amulet around his neck, but the amulet gets taken off and the leprechaun is free. And he's tussling with this fucking pawn shop owner forever. Also, the pawn shop's owner's name is Gupta. <laughs> Does that feel, does that feel a bit? <laughs> Who wrote this? Written by David Debo. It's an Indian pawn shop owner named Gupta. I don't know how I feel about that, <laughs> okay? He's like beating the shit out of this pawn shop owner the whole time as the pawn shop owner is trying to get his pot of gold. And as they're tussling, like one of the gold coins rolls off. And of course that's gonna be found by somebody later. We also get this time there's like, Gupta has a program on his computer that talks about Irish folklore and kind of tells you more about it. I wonder if it's just because of the complaint of people being like, what the fuck are the rules to this fucking thing? In this one, to the big emphasis is if you hold a gold coin, you get a one wish. So there's no longer three. It's if you're holding the gold coin, you get to have one wish. I would say the movie really starts though when we get introduced to our innocent and I'm, I don't know how I feel about Scott. His name's Scott McCoy and he's like a hapless new, kind of like fish out of water, super innocent guy who goes to Vegas with a shit ton of money. He's moving for like a job and he picks up a girl named Tammy who she's getting a job at the Shamrock Casino, which you can tell that they did not have a lot of budget for this because let me tell you, the casinos they used in this movie for their actual sets, the casino doesn't even have an actual sign. They printed off a fucking banner and just hung it up on the on the, on the outside of the building, on the outside of the abandoned building that they rented for three days to film this movie. And they have one neon sign that says like casino or open. And it's like the smallest like little neon sign. Uh, she wants to be a magician or like a magician's assistant. And she warns Scotty, don't be gambling any money. And what does Scotty do? He immediately gambles all of his money, like over $20,000 worth of money, his tuition money for college. Gambles it all immediately on roulette of all games, okay? <laughs> Not even like blackjack or something, you have more of a chance. I mean, like obviously the casino is gonna win either way, but my God, roulette, holy shit. He freaks out and he talks to the woman running the table named Loretta, who we find out in this movie that she's like a washed up old hag. She's like, oh, I look so old and I'm unattractive, but she, I mean, she looks fine. They just put like a wig on her. They're like, look how old she is, ew. But Loretta's like, well, if you aren't such a fucking pussy, you'll go and sell that stupid ass watch of yours. And he's like, but my grandpa gave me this. It's his World War II watch. It's it's priceless. She's like, you know, the biggest mistake a gambler can make is uh, walking away from the table right when he's about to hit big. So he walks across the street to the pawn shop where the leprechaun's at. Who knows where the fuck Goop is at? They're having a tussle in the back. The leprechaun's counting his gold coins, but Scotty finds one of them. And as he's holding it, he says, I wish I was on a winning streak. And sure enough, he shows back up at the Shamrock Casino and he is winning big time. He's moving his chips around and they're moving on their own with some kind of leprechaun magic. Magic. And finally, there's something that shows some leprechaun magic. I'll say that. There's something that can at least show that this leprechaun does some kind of magic besides being able to do a woman's voice pretty good. Cause that's all, and, and make go-karts. You know what I mean? That's right, us leprechauns have tons of magic. <sighs> there's gonna be a new leprechaun for every one of these movies, isn't there? Where did you even? <laughs> you are ugly. <laughs> He's so I look at him. You're breathing so heavily too. You have a seatback machine? I'll have sleep apnea. I bet you do. You also look like you have rickets. I just found out what rickets were because I was noticing these movies that Warwick Davis's legs are bowed. Didn't know that's what rickets was. Had no idea. Hey, you learn a little something new every day, don't you, little guy? Don't call me that. 
Okay. But I think Loretta begins to notice that like the kid has like a magical abilities. There's a pit boss named Mitch. There's like a weird dichotomy between Mitch, this magician that Tammy's working for named Fazio and Loretta. So Loretta's like, hey, that kid, he has a magical ability because Mitch is like, you know, this guy just won big. We're gonna give you a free room because he's gonna gamble it all the way tomorrow. Sure. Fazio, while Scott's taking a break, shows up to his room and just like kicks the shit out of Scott for a second and throws a smoke pellet and leaves and takes his coin. And Scott's like, what the hell's going on? I got mugged. So the leprechaun immediately shows up after that and bites him and runs off. And this is where actually something pretty sweet is. Scott begins to turn into a leprechaun, like werewolf thing. I like that. You get bit by a leprechaun, you turn into a leprechaun. Those, those are just easy monster rules. Get bit by a zombie, turn into a zombie, werewolf, what, you know, come on. It's good. Which Fazio takes the gold coin. He wishes to be the best magician. He starts doing pretty good. Oh, no, no, no. Or wait, no, wait, wait. Sorry, 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 sorry. So Loretta takes the coin from Fazio, who stole the coin initially. But Loretta takes it from Fazio. But Mitch, the casino boss, takes it from Loretta. Basically, he wishes for some pussy. Tammy's like, goes into a weird phase where she's like, ooh, I need you. And he's like, oh, baby, oh my God. They go up to his managerial suite, I guess. And it's like the trashiest looking room ever. No money went into the set at all. All, but he's like, ah, oh, God, baby, oh, Jesus. And the leprechaun's doing, like, some funny, it's, they're supposed to be funny fake commercials, which... I, okay, but as he's like fucking Tammy, Loretta sneaks in and steals the coin, and because the coin is taking from him, it breaks his wish. So Tammy thinks she, he's like a creep, and she's like, "What's going on here? This is fucked up." She's like, "I quit," and runs off. And he's like, "Ah, oh, you're fired. Fuck you." And then uh, the leprechaun has a girl crawls out of the TV like ring, and he's like, "Oh God!" Once again, "Oh baby, Jesus Christ!" And it's definitely <laughs> you find out that it's a robot, and there's like a robot with like fake tits. <laughs> Like an ass and stuff. It's, it's so stupid. But it electrocutes him to death. He, he gets his cock electrocuted and it kills him. Kind of funny. Loretta, 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 Loretta wishes for beauty to be hot again. And all that happens is she takes off her wig and she wears a dress. And now she's hot. So, you know. Which then Fazio comes in, steals the coin from Loretta. And because the coin's off of her, it breaks her curse. And then she starts to expand and explodes. But it looks like popcorn. There's no blood in the scene. It looked like it's all styrofoam. But it looks like she blows up into popcorn. <laughs> into popcorn. Fazio wishes to be a really good magician. It begins to happen once again. His coin goes missing. Or no, the leprechaun shows up and he's like, oh, I know you have my coin. Leprechaun takes it back. Fazio gets killed. He gets cut in half. Pretty fun. A lot of blood there. This entire time, Scotty keeps kind of like turning into leprechauns here and there, but we actually, when Scotty is transforming into a leprechaun, he actually puts on an Irish accent. You will share nothing. I know how you are. You're only bluffing. Took until about the third movie for me to realize he's not even doing an Irish accent. He's it's just it, Warwick Davis is just doing his normal British accent. It's just kind of weird. So then when Scott starts doing it, you're like, oh yeah, there has not been a single Irish accent this entire time. Scotty's transforming. He's showing some weird traits where he's just eating potatoes. Basically, it's really nothing. After the leprechaun cuts him in half, the whole audience flees, and then there's a fight between Scotty and the leprechaun, and then Scotty burns the pot of gold, which in the return it burns the leprechaun, and he's just like swinging on a wire, burning to death. It transforms Scotty back to normal. Scotty and Tammy leave the casino and Tammy like has the coin again and she's gonna make a wish, but uh, she once again just kind of like discards the coin. It's the exact same ending as the second movie. Like literally it's the exact same ending except Warwick Davis is swinging on a wire, screaming and burning on fire, which sounds funny and cool, but in practice it looks pretty bad. But all in all, I will say this movie kind of ruled. I'm not gonna lie. It hits a lot of the fun marks if it goes a little overtly cartoony. You have more of Warwick Davis. The only thing that was fucked up is that like there's a scene where Warwick Davis is on Fremont Street in Vegas and there's people who are definitely just pointing and laughing at him because he's like in a leprechaun outfit. I just felt bad. I felt bad for him. But you know, he said time and time again that he's had fun with this role. So I mean, I guess he probably doesn't give a shit, but I just remember being like, God damn, dude, really? The fuck is going on? He said this is his favorite. And he did. And Warwick Davis definitely did say this is his favorite one out of all of them. It's my favorite too. You're biased. This is your film, I think. I don't, I'm still confused. There's so many leprechauns in this house right now. I'm, I'm so confused. All in all, I like this one a lot. This is probably my favorite one so far. This one felt that it like flowed the fastest too. Like I was having, I was more engaged. It had some really crazy moments. Whatever. I, I enjoyed this one out of all of them. So far, three is a top one than two. That's my ranking so far. It might change. I don't know. Especially as we get into the next one, which is Leprechaun 4 in space. Leprechaun in space. <laughs> Thank you.
Ah, Leprechaun 4. Leprechaun in space. Or it's just in space. Which this one didn't come out till 1997. A two year gap. That's our largest one so far. Our last one was in 95, right? So now it's been a couple of years. You know, they come back. They give them a little more money. 1.6 million to make this this little picture, right? But in this time, it got once again, straight to video. All right, we're, we're no more in the theater still. Just want to point that out there. And in this movie, it is the year 2096. And let me tell you, it's very optimistic by how far in technology we're going to be. In this one, once again, Leprechaun starts off. He wants to put pussy, he's trying to do that kind of thing. He's getting ready to marry a space princess named Zarina, and she does agree to do it because Leprechaun's wealthy and the Leprechaun wants to be a king. While they're getting ready to fuck and do that kind of thing, they get disrupted by some off-brand starship troopers. The Leprechaun has a lightsaber fight with one of them. They have some nice tussles where they shoot six feet across from each other in a cave. One of them throws a grenade and the Leprechaun hurt lockers himself and throws himself on top of it and explodes and he dies. The starship troopers are all, they're excited. One of them pisses on his body and then like almost like a rainforest parasite, Leprechaun's soul travels up his urine and into his urethra. 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 His dick, his cock. They go back to the ship to party in like the saddest looking club I've ever seen. It's so empty. And they make a big fuss and fuss about the guy who had peed on the body. He's getting ready to have sex with this other whore on the spaceship. It's basically just two whores having a good time. What do you expect? They all, you know, they're all like, ooh, he's gonna have sex. Bleh. They go out there and the leprechaun re-manifests himself through his dick hole, crawls out and uh, kills that guy. So pretty fun way, you know, nice. that's a nice fun rebirth, right? It's like a, a different take on the phoenix rising from the ashes. That's not too bad. I, I like it. Zarina, though, the princess, is held in this room. She's being observed by someone named Dr. Mittenhand, and it's like this really weird German scientist who has a robot body, and he keeps doing this on the camera. It's kind of a reveal, like the whole time he's always talking to you via a monitor, but this time when he rolls himself out, you're like, oh, he's a robot. But he's obsessed because Zarina has regenerative abilities. So his whole game is he's like, ooh, I'm gonna use her regenerative abilities and remake my body because of this horrible experiment that went wrong. And people kind of keep poking fun of him with that. There is a part in the movie, I don't know which part it is, but I'm just gonna say it now where this creepy assistant of his, once again, does some stuff where it's like touching an unconscious person, blah, blah. It's just really creepy and then the doctor Mittenhand rolls up behind him and kind of catches him in the act. And I think it's supposed to be funny, but it's just really uncomfortable and odd. So Leprechaun in space, <laughs> pretty sweet. From here, you know, the Leprechaun is trying to find his bride and he kind of just keeps picking off all the starship troopers in different ways. Like there's one where they have hazmats on and they're going into like this bacteria flesh eating virus room. It's like a sewer room and the Leprechaun has a little hazmat suit on also. And he cuts a hole in there. But by the time that they pull the guy out, he's just skin and bone, he's a skeleton. <laughs> Once again, you keep going, you know, they keep attacking here and there. He throws somebody off. He's, this girl's holding on for dear life on this like bridge and she falls off and dies down there. The leprechaun finds his bride and he attacks Mittenhand, the robot guy, by injecting like scorpion and spider DNA into him and it like causes him to fucking like spaz out. And by the time that the remaining crew finds Mittenhand, he's like out of his robot suit. So it's kind of assumed that he's transformed. You know what I mean? So they find out about that. The leprechaun walks around. He's like, I can't leave. He starts a self-destruct sequence on the ship. How the fuck would he know how to do that? It doesn't matter. And he's going around and he's like, I need me gold. I can't leave the ship without me gold. And uh, they find it and they shrunk his gold down to like be really tiny to be, I guess, easier to transport or something. And he's like, oh, you shrunk me gold. And his wife is like, who gives a fuck about your gold? And he's like, fuck you, bitch, and smacks her. And she gets knocked unconscious, and then he grows himself with the growth ray. So now he flips it the other way, and it makes it big. So now he's looking around once again for the crew, and he's a big leprechaun this time. Kind of fun. He's tiny, all the other movies. This time he's big. The other survivors go. They find Dr. Mitt Mittenhand, and they uh, fight him. And I will say, Dr. Mittenhand, his like effects for that are pretty sweet. It's like a weird spider scorpion thing. His acting is really fucking cringe, but it works in a weird way. But it looks great. It's a giant, nice costume. Him. It's really fun. They kill him by liquid nitrogen and then they shoot him with a gun. So he blows up. Pretty fun. He does mama and then. <laughs> Oh yeah, there's like a weird part too where their captain who has like a metal head does like a cross dressing thing. There's a part where the guy's like, sir, you do look beautiful. And I must say you look very nice, but tell me something, where's the alien? It's stupid. Uh, he, he dies though, cause apparently he's a robot or something. I don't fucking know. Basically the ending of this movie is pretty much just like alien. Basically the thing is like, they have an airlock, they open it in the leprechaun Warwick Davis, who's like big. He's like, no, <laughs> he gets sucked out into space and he warps, he just blows up in space. And they're like, ah, thank God we did 
did that and we stopped his self-destruct sequence, it's gonna be a-okay. And then a giant hand, his giant leprechaun hand goes up to the uh, window and it flips you off. And I thought that was kind of cute. All in all, this movie, once again, it's my favorite. It, it ju it's just so stupid and fun. These movies, I don't know if it's just because I'm getting more delirious or if it's just that these are getting progressively <laughs> more and more fun. Seeing a large Warwick Davis just walk around and they're doing like the same kind of practical effects shit they did with like Godzilla back in the day. Love it. Love it. It's just, it's too fun. I enjoyed it. Dr. Mittenhand was so cringy and over the top. Great character. It's about a space princess and Leprechaun wants to be a space king. They're just blatantly ripping off star, star, uh, star ship troopers. It's it's great. All in all, it's, it's really fun. To me, this, I don't know how they can hit their stride anymore. This is just classic B, even C tier, schlocky horror that is just fun for everybody. I, I loved it. Where's, you know what's weird is there, where the fuck's the fourth Leprechaun at? Oh, here he is. You're crawling. You're crawling over the back instead of the front, huh? I mean, I like the movie. You missed the whole thing. Did you like the movie? I just, I just said I liked the movie. Did you like Princess Zarina's titties? Uh, no. No, I didn't. There's like a, that weird part where it's needless. She like flashes the screen and she's like, oh, here you go. And she's just flashing it. And they're definitely just doing that to obviously get some boobs in the film. But then one of the other doctors on the ship, she's like, oh, once you see that species of alien's breast, it means you're gonna die. And it's like, what a clever way of writing that. You know what? That was really fucking stupid in your movie I just praised. I thought it was pretty cool. Okay, you're a pervert. Is that it? Oh, there he's just crawling away. Okay. Gross little son of a bitch. I'm tired of seeing him. I still have to talk to two more leprechauns. Not only do I have to watch two more of these leprechaun movies, I have to talk to two more leprechauns. And I'm very upset about that. All right, next one up is Leprechaun 5 in the hood. It's kind of, you, you know what's weird is that, why does that feel like a natural progression? You go to space and then you go to the hood. You would think that you would stay on Earth, you go to the hood, and then you'd go to space, but no. So Leprechaun 5 in the hood coming up. <laughs> Leprechaun 5 in the hood, which I'm just gonna get this out. Who is Leprechaun 5 in the hood? Come up here. Oh my God. Why do you look like this? By this point in time, I mean, how many more variations of a Leprechaun can you do? Are you in pain? He doesn't need, he's not even responding. He's just, he's just looking at me. Stop. Is this all this is gonna be? <laughs> he's just looking at me. Okay, go off and play with your friends. Oh, here comes the second one. Oh, because you're Leprechaun 6 back to the hood. You guys are just going to sit, stand here? Nope, you're going to leave? Okay. The interactions with these Leprechauns is getting less and less uh, creative, let me tell you that. <laughs> Which Leprechaun Back in the Hood, or Leprechaun 5 in the Hood, it came out in the year 2000, so once again, a little more time. I will say this is another one of those movie store covers that I saw when I was younger that actually scared me. I always thought ice tea sitting in the throne was kind of scary, but I do remember Warwick Davis's like super detailed, crispy looking face. Kind of looks like there's like white cheddar fuzz all over him. It's very odd. But this whole movie is all about ice tea. They're doing like a 70s black dynamite thing. He has like an afro. They're leaning a lot more into the comedy, at least in the beginning. They're in like the subways, or like a subway of some kind, and the leprechaun, we get the statue again, like from Leprechaun 3, and they take the amulet off, the leprechaun comes back to life even though they have their pot of gold, and they have this huge big fight, you know, the leprechaun kills Ice-T's friend, but thankfully Ice-T trips, and as he trips, he falls on a plank, the amulet falls back on the leprechaun's neck, and he is turned to stone again, so Ice-T is able to keep his gold, and especially a golden flute, which I'm guessing the golden flute's like when you play it, it's supposed to have like magical abilities, so pretty sweet. Which there is a gag in the beginning too where Ice-T keeps taking out things comically from his afro and hitting the leprechaun, but it's like a very brief moment, so it's almost like it feels like Ice-T has magical abilities as well. I don't know. We cut to the future though, and we have a group of people named Postmaster P, Stray Bullet, and Butch, who are like a trio of rappers who are trying to compete in this competition to go to Las Vegas to like basically get an opportunity to have a record deal. While they're performing though, their speaker blows up, they leave their audience audition with their heads held down low, they're upset, until they come across Ice-T, who is now this wealthy kind of like music overlord, I'm guessing with his flute and with Leprechaun Gold, he's able to amass this kind of respect in his own label. The friends go there and they're like, here, let me put on this stuff. And they're, all their rap is very like about positivity and Ice-T pretty much calls it gay <laughs> and tells him to get the fuck out of there because he wants music about people killing each other with Uzis, is what he says. This label, we rap about Uzis, blowing motherfuckers' heads off, you know what I'm saying? Smack your bitch up. Shoot your motherfucking homeboy in the face type shit. 
right? But as revenge though, because they called their music, you know, pretty cringe, the troop goes back and decides to rob Ice-T's place. And it is kind of funny, in Ice-T's office, in a glass case, he has the leprechaun statue, which I just thought that was kind of sweet. You go back there and you're like, get that little bitch, we're gonna put him in my office forever. And Butch is like taking off the glass case and he removes the amulet, freeing the leprechaun. Postmaster P shoots Ice-T and steals the gold flute off his wrist. And now the leprechaun is free and he's gonna hunt down the troop because once again, they have his gold. God forbid we do anything else. It's, it's my God. You think Ice T's dead, but he wakes up and he's like, oh man, I got shot. And he like walks away, but then he just like the leprechaun just shows up in a bathroom. They smoke weed together. And I think it's supposed to be something where you're like, nice, he's smoking weed. That's sick. The troop sits there, they survive. They're pawning off all this shit to get more new equipment and stuff. They're riding high. Postmaster P, he like starts playing the flute and it like puts everybody into like a hypnosis. So you kind of find out that's like what the power is. I think he's just able to do whatever he wants because he plays it. Which they go to a church. This reverend, his name's Reverend Hanson. He gets killed. They have a transgender friend that gets killed that they hang out with. And there's like a, what's weird about that scene is they're trying to make it seem like he's like fucking him. And the troop is like, yo, yuck, or whatever, whatever. It's, and it's like, you know, he's just like stabbed, but it looks like they frame it like he's fucking. I don't know. It's like, I don't know. It's a, it's a 2000s comedy film. What the fuck are you, are you expecting? And also uh, Jack. D, which is like a guy who owns uh, the pawn shop that they keep going to, he also dies. But the leprechaun catches the troop and they're like, once again, trying to go to the contest where they're gonna get the record deal. They make a bomb out of a heat pad and blow up the fucking leprechaun. He catches on fire and runs away again. That's all, I mean, it's just, it, it's moving, it's moving by. I'm, I'm, my energy is so low. A stray bullet kills stray bullet, right? Which is kind of funny. The leprechaun catches back up and the leprechaun like uses his magic to make stray bullet put the gun to his head and it kills him. And then now Postmaster P and Butch are just like, what the hell are we gonna do? Or we have to do this for Stray Bullet. And Butch just shows up to Postmaster P's grandma house with like surveillance goggles or something. He has like spy gear on or whatever. They decide to go and infiltrate the leprechaun's lair by dressing up in drag to pose as like one of his whores because he keeps having like hookers go there or something. And that's their big end. They break the leprechaun spell on all of his other whores by he smokes like a joint, but it has a four leaf clover in it. And that breaks the spell. The spell because weed because weed is sick <laughs> oh yeah the leprechaun wants postmaster p to suck his cock but you know he, he has the leprechaun smoke that spliff as it were with four leaf clover and makes him pass out he gets the flute once more as they're going downstairs ice tea shows back up he's getting ready to fight them oh my god this is all so stupid which now because postmaster p's been advocating peace this whole time he has kind of a bit of a character soaker here by shooting ice tea three times and killing him now he's kind of made a full arc of like now he's killing for this opportunity he's not the innocent boy he he once was before. You know, Leprechaun wakes back up even though he was high as shit. He wakes up and he's not affected by the four leaf clover weed anymore. Oh yeah, Butch does get shot by ST, so he's dead. So now you are sitting there and the Leprechaun's just like, hey, I'm gonna fuck you up. They have a tussle. You have a moment where you think the amulet is dropping back on Leprechaun's head, like in the beginning when he turns back to stone. And we cut to the future where it looks like Postmaster P is a very successful artist, but then you see the Leprechaun out in the crowd. It turns out that the amulet didn't fall on him and that Postmaster P is now possessed by the Leprechaun doing his bidding and making him probably tons of fucking money and he's out there and this is the first time the leprechaun's ever won and I, I, I you know in, in brief little summaries of course these all probably sound really fucking stupid but this one was actually really enjoyable as well did i enjoy it as much as leprechaun in space i think i almost enjoyed it as much as leprechaun in space but i still it's up there it's definitely not a, the worst one by any means and i do like the there's actual character arcs in this too which is kind of nice right postmaster p being this innocent guy who wouldn't kill anybody and then his greed overtakes him and he pays the ultimate price by having the leprechaun make him his fucking, his little rapping money pig forever. You know what I mean? So that's kind of fun. And also at the end of the movie, Warwick Davis raps because why wouldn't he in a movie called Leprechaun in the Hood? I come from the land of the Irish Spring. Dublin's the place where I learned my thing. From the Emerald Isle to your place in the hood. I'm the man of green, come to do no good. Not the worst one, which, you know, I don't know where the leprechauns went, but... That, you know, it, it was it was fine. I'm gonna put in my Rolodex. I'm not gonna reveal my rating yet. Which let me tell you, I'm just gonna have, I'm just gonna caveat this review into the next one. The next one, Leprechaun Back to the Hood. People online kept saying that these two were the best ones. I thought Leprechaun Back to the Hood was one of the worst ones. I'm not even gonna, it's the exact same movie. It's kind of the exact same movie as all of the other ones, except it's just annoying. It's just a bunch of fucking weed jokes and stuff like that. It's so, it's so boring. It does everything that all the other movies have done, except it's trying to be be a funny mess and I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to talk about it. What is there to say, Nick? That, that uh, 
they make this joke about the ninja thing. Oh yeah, which in this one, the big thing about Leprechaun is that you don't say the N word now, you say ninja. And then later on in the movie, the Leprechaun says, what's up my ninjas? <laughs> what's up ninjas? I mean, that's probably because in the original script, they probably had Warwick Davis saying the actual N-word, and he was like, I am not going to say that. So they're like, okay, well, we'll have one of the characters say ninjas instead. So then now it's like, yeah, he kind of said it. Sorry, Leprechaun, but you said it. And it's, it's, it's the same old story about, like, people taking his gold, Leprechaun trying to find his gold. We're six movies in. It's so, I, I'm so done. I'm so done. I'm ready to get these goddamn Leprechauns out of my house. I can tell you it's not high up on the list. I can at least say that. But I will say, I, I at least think I'm ready for my actual ratings. So without further ado, I think it's it's time for me to gather up all the leprechauns and do that now! All right, all right, settle down. Jesus Christ, all these mythical goddamn creatures in my- Okay, I get it, I get it. This is the deal. I rank these movies, you guys give me the pot of gold. That was the rules, all right? So I just want that to be extremely clear. And my ranking goes as follows. I don't know how the hell this is gonna work, so you guys just do whatever you gotta do. I think dead last for me personally, if I'm being completely honest, I gotta go... Leprechaun 6, Back to the Hood. I mean, I didn't even want to fucking review the thing. It was the sloggiest one to get through. By that point too, I've seen five other Leprechaun movies who kind of all have the same story structure and everything. So I, I gotta go Leprechaun 6, Back to the Hood, I'm sorry. Okay, so they're just gonna cl climb back in as follows. Okay, so, hmm. Which, there you go. Coming in number five, I think I gotta go Leprechaun 2. I just... He just went right really quick. Okay, he's just, they're crawling in. It's like Pikmin or something like that. It's very odd. The thing about Leprechaun 2 is that it doesn't really do anything right besides getting just a little more screen time with Warwick Davis, which is what I think Leprechaun 6, Back to the Hood, there wasn't enough Warwick Davis. You also have that really shitty stomach prop again. That gives it a little bit of points too, but all in all, all the characters are actually pretty fucking insufferable. The character Bridget, whoever that actress was, was really bad. But at least it looked like Warwick Davis was having a little bit of fun. So, I mean, come on, you know what I'm supposed to do. Coming in at number four. For me, it's got to be Leprechaun 1. I mean, it's the thing that first started it. With all these things that happen, people don't agree when I put the first installments lower than one, but sometimes it takes a minute to get your footing. And in a trilogy like this, I feel like they didn't really know what the fuck they were supposed to do. I think the only thing they were banking on was that they had Warwick Davis, the famous actor, in this movie. Other than that, though, you know, I mean, it's the first thing. You, got, you do have to put some respect on it, but it does feel like they're getting their footing. It is pretty fun. And to see a young Jennifer Aniston this early on, too, was pretty fun, too, if I'm being honest. Number three. I'm probably gonna go Leprechaun 3. Leprechaun 3 was the first movie in the Leprechaun films where I was like, ooh, this was fun. The idea of Leprechaun biting somebody or getting their blood infected and they become a Leprechaun and they do an even better Irish accent or they at least try to do an Irish accent is pretty nice as well. But I mean, all in all, you know, you had all the fun kind of stuff. You had the weird sex robot thing, a woman exploding from her own cursed object. It was kind of fun too because everybody had repercussions for their wishes. There was actual character developments. There was little gross, little things here and there. Not a lot. You know, I'm not gonna say it's the fanciest thing in the world, but at least it happened. And once again, Warwick Davis said this is his favorite film of the Leprechaun film, so that carries some weight too. And you can tell that he's having fun here. Him walking around the Las Vegas Strip, it's always fun to see. So I gotta put Leprechaun 3 at number three. Now, these two guys left, God, they are just ugly as hell. Look at them. Look at you guys. It's like adopting a pug. You can hear them wheezing and breathing down. It doesn't matter. Number two, I gotta say, Leprechaun 5, Back to the Hood, which means Leprechaun 4 in space is the winner, but let me at least justify this. Going into this, there was a lot of hype around Leprechaun, In the Hood, and Back to the Hood. Leprechaun 5, In the Hood, unironically a pretty good film. And the, the movie doesn't even have a lot of Warwick Davis in it, which is what makes these films. It's having the actual Leprechaun float around, rhyme, do a bunch of little bullshit here and there, but I feel like even the characters without the Leprechaun in it were just, was just fun. Like, Ice-T fucking ruled in this movie. I like Postmaster P, I like Butch, I like Stray Bullet, I like the troop having a, a goal of wanting to go to Vegas to become stars, and also this was the first of Leprechaun films where the Leprechaun actually won. It wasn't him just dying and then coming back in the other ones, you know? It's one of the ones where the villain actually wins and it feels fun because also it feels like a punishment for Postmaster P almost taking the evil side of his story arc, right? Starting as an innocent guy, but then turning into a villain. It was nice. I liked it a lot, but I just don't think it holds anything to our winner, which is <laughs> surprisingly Leprechaun 4 in space. 
I think this is the pinnacle of what makes a great B horror film or like a cheesy C-list horror film. You have an actor who is way too overqualified to be in this absolute mess of a film, but at least he's getting paid. But everybody else, I feel like this would be the funnest one on all of the movies to be on. You have all these obnoxious sets that look pretty good. It was probably, I think Triarch Pictures did this or Tri Pictures did this, whatever. So it might've been leftover sets from some of their other movies, but it looked pretty good. The schlocky idea of a space princess and the leprechaun wanting to be a space ping. You have Dr. Mittenhand becoming this like weird cyborg character and then transforming into a scorpion spider bug thing. You have the leprechaun doing the hurt locker jump on the grenade. I mean, it just, it's awesome. I liked all of the schlocky moments in it. It doesn't take itself serious at all. To me, this was the perfect blend of the leprechaun franchise doing the funny with the horror. And the horror is never real in these films, right? I don't think it's ever, none of the films are ever trying to scare you, but it's at least using the aesthetic and the idea of like a stereotypical slasher film to convey the idea of what this character is supposed to be, right? It's not trying to be as epic or as cool as like Jason Voorhees, right? As like Freddy Krueger, but it's like, it, you know what it is. It's an evil leprechaun. And to think that we got to the point where he's up in space and then he gets sucked out of an airlock, paying homage to one of the greatest horror movies of all time, Alien, and then he explodes and then flips off the camera at the end. It is the perfect ending to what every one of these films says to you. You sat down, you watched this movie, go fuck yourself. That's what it feels like. And that's why I think this is my rating. Bada bing, bada boom. What the hell is this? They're all coming back out. Oh, God. Trick job, we just wanted to see what your ranking is, you fat, stupid piece of shit. Okay, well, that's just rude. Oh, God. God damn it, they just ran. I don't know where they went. They're gone. So wait, you're telling me that I just watched all these Leprechaun movies for no reason? <laughs> well, that's my life. Wait, before you go, we have new Patreon stickers. Randomized Leprechaun stickers available in the month of March. So sign up now, and one of these little Leprechauns can be yours.